Alright, what's going on guys? So, I don't usually make news videos or updates when Cold War Zombies information gets released, but today Treyarch literally confirmed uh, just an unbelievable amount of information that started as leaks and Treyarch just came out and officially laid it all out on the table. And so, I figured today we would talk about a few things because I've seen a little bit of the community be concerned about some changes and some situations, and that's fair enough. So, we're going to dissect and, and discuss everything today. This video should serve as a healthy discussion for you guys down below in the comment section to let me and also like track developers know how you feel about these changes and it's also just kind of good for me to be able to lay this out in articulate form in a video for for my thoughts as well but anyways before we get too far into it i would just like to say if you guys do enjoy today's video to give it a thumbs up that would be awesome and i do stream zombies almost every single day over on twitch if you don't already follow me link to that will be down below i'd appreciate if you come over and say hi that'd be awesome but anyways let's get into this Treyarch made it pretty clear that this year's call of duty game is going to reflect back on survival and classic zombies gameplay. I think they learned a lot from BO4 sort of overstepping its grounds and becoming more of a journey-based game that, that wasn't really uh, exactly what made Zombies fun to begin with, and it almost lost sight of itself. So I, I, first of all, I'm happy to see them returning, at least in spirit, to what made them so good in the first place. But along with the return to classic survival gameplay comes our old fan favorite perks, but they are coming back with a bit of a twist, and I'll go ahead and explain these as cleanly and as plainly as I can. So basically, Juggernog Quick Revive, Speed Cola, Stamina Up, Deadshot, and Elemental Pop will be all of the perks available at launch. However, they're all coming with some tweaks. So think about your six base perks here, and they all have three different tiers of themselves. So Juggernog on tier one is going to increase your maximum health by 50 HP. Quick Revive will reduce the amount of time it takes to get full health back and also revive teammates by about 50%. Speed Cola will increase your reload speed by 15%. Stamina Up increases your sprint and, and walk speed. Deadshot will automatically sla snap to the enemy's critical spot and will also remove scope sway. Elemental pop will essentially have a small slight chance to activate an alternate ammo type when firing. So essentially there are three tiers of these six perks available at launch. Now the tiers can be upgraded through using Ethereum crystal and this is earned by hitting certain milestone rounds in game. I guess sort of like earning liquid divinium you can think of that in a sense or surviving exfils which which means you leave the game by doing a small lockdown and surviving instead of just clicking end game. We all kind of knew this stuff was happening, but I think that the 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 crucial part of the matter here, in upgrading these perks, they are permanent. So essentially, when you fully upgrade to tier 3 Juggernog, every time you load into a match, it, seemingly at all in any map whatsoever, Juggernog will be finally fully upgraded and I guess restored to its original self if you want to think about it that way. Now, this is the only thing that I'm a little bit questionable about right now. However, I don't think this is inherently a bad system, and I'll explain why. Initially, starting with your Tier 1 perks is going to force you to use strategies that are a little bit above your pay grade because you don't have the equipment to deal with the threat in front of you as the enemies get stronger every single round. Now, we'll discuss that a little bit later as well, but it seems like as you tend to upgrade perks that you're going to be able to match your enemies a little bit more, and they may scale along with you even if you do upgrade your perks. So keeping the progression in zombies still going and, and still feeling fresh. It's not clear to me exactly how quickly we're going to be able to do these, whether you can fully upgrade a perk in one day or if it's going to take a month or, or what have you. We have no idea on the details and the scale of that yet, but this is the only system that I'm like a little bit questionable about, but I don't think it's the end of the world. We've also got weapon rarities, which play into the whole loadout situation. And this, I would say, was the biggest pushback from the community when they did the zombies reveal which by and large if that's the biggest thing we're complaining about as a community then overall the game seems to be in, in pretty good shape because we, we would have way other bigger problems ideally but it seems like the weapon rarity system and conjunction to what you spawn in with is going to crucially play for how you progress through the game now your loadouts are going to spawn within basically a loadout or a common weapon only and you don't get to take everything you earned in multiplayer or warzone whatever into a zombies match you get to pick one gun and that's it maybe like one attachment or something you're going to bring a single base weapon it's not like you're taking a fully loaded kit into round one and you're going to pretty quickly try to swap out that loadout weapon as well it doesn't really matter whether it's a pistol or not as you can choose to run that but it's the idea that your weapon is still going to be bad no matter what i think this detail clears up a lot of the confusion that people had where it's like why am i spawning into zombies with an ar isn't that going to be broken or overpowered looks like that isn't exactly the case and it's not just a 
attachments that other rarities come with, but it's also weapon damage. So clearly the one that you spawn in with, you can get a better version of that gun, either off the wall or out of the mystery box that not only will have more and better attachments, but will also do more damage. Also, the mystery box's functionality has been completely changed, but I think it's for the better. So essentially the weapon rarities will play into the mystery box just as they do on the wall and elsewhere. So you will get weapon rarities and different damage multipliers out of the mystery box based on the weapon that it gives you. Now the cool thing is here, as you keep surviving into higher rounds, you're, there's still incentive to hit the mystery box because the likelihood you get an epic or legendary weapon that of course deals more damage, has more attachments, increases as the rounds go up. So technically you can pull like an epic pistol uh, on round one and you know go crazy for the first, first few rounds. But as other guns like ARs and maybe some rare ones start to pop up, you might want to consider swapping out or not. This is where the intricacy and the variety of the mystery box starts to play in and from what I've read and what they've said it, it it sounds pretty incredible I gotta be honest I like the system a lot continuously rolling the mystery box throughout your game to get different weapons and swapping to different uh, strategies and everything is gonna keep the high rounds part of the game fresh and I and I, I'm a big fan of that instead of just having one setup and that's the only thing you play every time you play the map this is actual incentive to switch it up also, Cold War does have what we'll call specialist weapons, but I, I, I'm only using that to give you a rough example of what they're going to be like, but they're not specialist weapons at all. I was a... I was probably the biggest detractor of specialist weapons in BO4 for a lot of reasons I won't get into, but I think it overall hurt the game in a very major way. So essentially, Cold War Zombies is going to have field upgrades, and you can probably think of these more similarly to the uh, class effects in World War II Zombies, but in Cold War, we have a few different ones. We have Front Blast, which creates a frigid blast of wind that deals frost damage and slows enemies caught inside of it, and slowed enemy enemies will also take additional damage. We have a healing aura that will summon beams of energy down onto yourself and allies in a radius to instantly heal to full health. We have an energy mine that creates a mine of pure energy that detonates on proximity of enemies dealing explosive damage. We have ring of fire that creates a ring of ethereal fire that boosts damage for you and your allies. Normal enemies enter a gain burning effect that deals fire damage and lasts for 15 seconds. And then finally we have ether shroud which you can better think of as zombie blood that lasts for approximately 5 seconds making you invisible to the enemy. Honestly, I've read through these pretty thoroughly, and they all sound fine to me. Again, it's it's not like a BO4 specialist system where it makes you a literal invincible god, and you only need to press two buttons when you make a mistake, def literally deflating all tension and gameplay. These are going to be like slight helps along the way, but not like a crutch you can rely on. Also, another thing I saw many people concerned about was the armor system. So there are basically like Warzone armor plates in this game as the replacement for the buildable zombie shield and this is created by crafting and, and using salvage now the reason I actually like the armor system as opposed to the zombie shield was because I thought the zombie shield was context only I didn't think every zombies map that exists needs a zombie shield however again based on context some do need it and some need an, another set of protection because of the aggressiveness of the zombies or the uh, close quarterness of the map there needs to be another layer of protection to make it fair for the player and it looks Looks like these kind of armor plates are going to do just the trick. They provide a 360 degree of protection, and as a player, it's going to provide you a significant advantage in staying alive, but it is a rare commodity. You're not going to come across armor plates like you do in Warzone, where you just kind of throw them on mindlessly. These are going to come very rarely from other zombies. Carpenter shields will repair it. I think this is a pretty good alternative to the zombie shield, and, and right now, I think I'm a fan of this. I've got to play the game to make sure, but I really don't think we can pass any judgment onto the armor system yet without actually trying it out and see how it plays it could be broke it could be whack we don't know but i'm gonna keep this one open-minded as right now because i feel like the zombie shield definitely was an issue so i'm glad they're kind of switching it up here now as far as the score streak system and also looting and, and everything and that kind of stuff crafting I'm, I'm not gonna get too deep into that because i feel like it'd be wrong to speculate as we just have no idea right it's too vague to draw anything conclusive from these systems so i'm not gonna go into these too much what I will say is that Treyarch seems to have a good head on their shoulders for why Zombies is fun, but they seem to be trying to go deeper and expand that core gameplay. Because if it was literally just Black Ops 3 again, then the game would be stale and boring. And, and I'm glad they've taken just enough risks to feel like it's in interesting. Again,
again, there are still some things I'm worried about being kind of weird or awkward, and we'll see how that plays when the game comes out. Also, no instance right now or no mention of Gobblegums or Elixirs, and that could be a good or bad thing depending on who you are. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed that there's no Gumballs right now. Uh, again, no mention of it, but we'll have to see if there's any sort of microtransactions that comes along with it that aren't just purely cosmetic. That stuff in particular is still TBD, and I'll keep you guys updated on that, but overall, I guess the only things that worry me a little bit is the armor system and also the permanent perk upgrades, but I'm not like completely writing those off now, and I'm not like fuming or furious about anything. Like, the changes I'm actually pretty open to. I remember before before Black Ops 3 came out, I thought Zombies was going to be ruined when I watched the Shadows of Evil trailer, and ironically, that ended up being my favorite map of all time, and a lot of the changes that we now retrospectively look at in BO3 end up being some of the, some of the most cherished changes in Zombies ever, and I'm hoping that the ones they plan for Cold War pan out just the same way, but again, we've got a really good base to start out with. I'm, I'm happy with, with the direction of the game where it's going, and I'm so excited to get my hands on it in about two weeks, and I hope you guys are as well. Let me know what you think about the video down below in the comment section. Let me know you think about Cold War Zombies if you guys are excited, if you're concerned. I would love to know your thoughts and opinions, but if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like rating. Make sure to go follow me over on Twitch if you haven't already, and subscribe to this channel if you are brand new. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all on the next stream or the next video. Take it easy, guys, and peace out.